शलाकया चक्षुन्मल तस्म श्रीगुरव नम वंदेह श्रीगुरोपदकमल श्रीगुरून वैष्णवाश्चरूप सागृजात सह गण रघुनाथन्वी तम सजीव साइत सवधूत परिजन सहित श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पादान सहगण ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंह दीनबंध जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी ऋषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमानी हरिष्ये नवो महावदान्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायिने कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नामिने गौरत्वशे नमः पञ्चतत्त्वात्मक कृष्ण भक्तस्वक भक्तावतारं भक्त नमामी भक्तशक्ति श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जन्मादन्वया चार्थ्रह्मिकेजोवारी मृदा यथा विनिमय यो वृषा धान सदा निरस्तुमक सत्यम परम धीमहि नारायणं नमस्कृत्य नरं चैव नरोत्तमं देवी सरस्वती व्यासं ततो जय गुरुदेव सो वी रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद् भागवतम फोर्थ कैंटो चैप्टर 4 वर्स वर्स नंबर 18 एंड दिस इज अ डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ Sati, wife of Shiva, used in the sacrifice which was performed by his father Daksha, and she was speaking to the father in a very angry mood because she realized that Daksha is very envious of her husband or Shiva, although he is not guilty. or having a defect but still the choice and we are suffering and therefore she did not want to associate or be related with daksha anymore so for this reason she first she was speaking to daksha how he is so low class that he is being envious of such a great person who is respected by the top most transcendentalists like kumaras and even great personalities including brahma respect him and feel honored to even take things which are used by shiva as prasad although these things he was calling them as impure and then she gave a proper behavior that if someone disrespects a person like shiva accuses him unnecessarily then what is the proper behavior like that should she describe in the last verse so idea is not to be involved in criticism of the word is of the lord what to speak of criticizing the lord because that is a very great obstacle on the path of bhakti 
that is what we should avoid at any cost. It's more important than even performing spiritual practice. So you perform spiritual practice and commit a prath, then it nullifies everything. So just like in Ayurveda, if you want to cure your de disease, then more important than taking medicine is actually avoiding the prohibited diet. Otherwise you go on taking medicine and eat which you are supposed to avoid then it has no influence. So therefore Bhagavatam teaches this avoidance of offense through these stories. Because such situations often come in our own life because of the human nature. So Human beings have a specific nature because of identification with the body. And one of the very common human mental diseases is this insecurity. That feeling of something will happen to me, I will lose something or I am not being respected. It may be loss on the physical level or loss in the level of some subtle things on our respect. Mainly this idea of being having some status in the society is very important for the human mind. So this is actually what Daksha is going through. Because Shiva has not done anything to him. He did not even speak a word against him. Nor did he point some fingers or made any symbols to disrepair. Sometimes without speaking also you can disrespect somebody looking sternly or twisting your eyes or he had one guard before he had long mustache and then we had one boy living so he and this guard did not get along together so whenever this boy came in front of him he will twirl his moustache. <laughs> so this boy came and complained to me. <laughs> He's always doing this because he was very offended by this. <laughs> so what can we do now? <laughs> if I tell the guard, he says, this is just my habit, you know. <laughs> I'm not doing this for him. But he thinks that he was always doing it. <laughs> just to send a message to him. So in India, this twirling the moustache was a very important thing for Kshatriyas. <coughs> if a low class person did this in front of a Kshatriya, then he would finish him. <laughs> because this is a sign that I am challenging you basically. Twirling your moustache means that I challenge you. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there is also a different, uh, like Kshatriya will have mustache in different ways, Vaishya will have mustache yes. in different ways. Yeah. Kshatriya mustache has to go up. Otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> can be horizontal. <laughs> <laughs> so, this uh, honor, respect in the material world, this is a very important thing. And that's why Lord Shiva said that for an honorable person, dishonor is like death. That's why he said, don't go there, you will be dishonored. And if you are dishonored, then what is your life? So now therefore she wants to give up her life for this very reason. Not dishonor for herself, but for the sake of Shiva. So that's what she speaks in this verse. Atastavotpannam idam kalevaram nadhariyashe shitikantha garhena jagdhasya mohadi vishuddhi mandhaso jugupsitasya uddharanam prachakshate So she said that therefore I am not going to keep this body anymore because this body has come from you. You are my father, 
you have given me this body atastavotpanna vidam kalayam this body nadhari se so she knows that she is not the body it's like somebody gives you a gift and then that person turns against you then you say take this away i don't want it or in front of that person you throw away the gift right to disrespect him just i don't care because you identify the gift with that person so throwing away the gift is like throwing away that person so she is saying that i will not keep this body anymore this dress which you have given me i will cast it off why because shruti kant garhin you are accusing lord shiva <coughs> who is called here as shruti kant means whose throat is bluish because he drank the poison called halal which came out from the channel of the ocean which indicates that lord shiva is such a compassionate person that he even drank poison to protect the humanity otherwise everybody would have been killed by this poison in this poison would have flown out of the ocean and it was so strong that even the smell will kill people it was like a chemical weapon so lord shiva he drank this but he kept it in his throat and that's why throat became blue in color so he is called shitikand so he says you are actually criticizing such a person who can drink poison for others sake so sometimes the poison is also described as this ninda or criticism or accusation so keeping in the throat means not saying it not taking it in and just holding it that is the poison so she gives an example she said jagdasya moha adhim shuddhi mandaso jugupstasya udharanam prachakshate it is said that if by mistake you eat some food which is not wholesome for the body then what do you do you do vomit vomiting that is the only way you purify your body otherwise if it is not salubrious to your system it goes inside then it is going to cause some trouble so sometimes people vomit the system itself rejects it and sometimes in ayurveda at least they will prescribe voluntary vomiting you know some medicines you take them and you vomit and clean the system so it's a jagdasya moha adi vishuddhi mandasa the food which you have eaten which is jugupsita means not proper then udharanam it is recommended that you throw it out so is for that reason she said that i will give up the body and then i will become pure and this is a mistake that i took birth from me so this is big insult to daksha sometimes people commit suicide only to take revenge this is one way of taking revenge i there was one devotee from bengal i remember long ago he told me this real story that there was one man and he went to bazaar with his wife and the wife saw an saree and she wanted to buy it the man didn't have money and wife was not really in need of it she had sufficient was not a rich fellow but she insisted that i want it i want it so he got so upset and angry he said okay i'll buy it for you but you will not you will not be able to wear it, wear it. 
So he said, how is this? You just buy and I will wear. So he bought it. But then at night he committed suicide. <laughs> and in Bengal especially there is a tradition that if the husband dies, then he will wear the white dhoti. So she could not use this. <laughs> so just to take the revenge, the guy gave up his life. So sometimes people do that. So she says that, this is the comment, Aham tu sarvashwariyat sarv samarthyat chat pam swam cha brahman dakoti rapi hantum shaknumati api. She said that actually because I am so powerful, I have all capacity. I am able to kill you, kill myself. I can even destroy the whole universe. I have that much power. This is Shiva's wife. She is Shakti personified. But I will not do that. I will not kill you. Why is that? Svabhariya dwara shivaiva daksham jaghan iti shivaya shavahani bhutya Because I am afraid that if I did that, then everybody will say that Shiva killed Daksha through his wife. So then again Shiva will get the blame. So to avoid that, I will not kill you, I will kill myself. So, Tvam na hanmi, I will not kill you. Svaprashchittam tu karishyami eve. But I will definitely do atonement myself for hearing and seeing all this disregard for Shiva. Are papin svachakshurbhyam pasyantu. You sinful person, just see with your own eyes. I am saying that just see. And the atayiti. And then she speaks this verse. Tautvatta pramadat grihitasya apavitrasya tanu tyagam vinana sundra. Says by mistake, I have got this body from you, which is very impure, and therefore I am going to give it up. Iti arthantar nyasena ay. So then she gives an example to show this different type of. Alankar called him Thantarnyas. Jagdasya bhuktasya andasvanyasya udranam vaman. It's like if you eat wrong food, then you vomit that. Na veda vadaan nanu vartate matihi svaeva loke ramato mahamane Nyathagatir deva manasya yaho prithag svaeva dharmena param shipet siddha so he says, Na Veda Vadan Anuvartate Mati Svayeva Loke Ramato Mahama. He says that the great people like Shiva, their intelligence does not follow the path of this Karma Kanda, Veda Vada. Krishna says, Veda Vada Rata Partha, Nanya Sastiti Vadana. That all these flowery words of the Vedas which are very attractive for the materialistic people. These are not attractive to those who are situated in transcendence. So they will locate them there in their own world, so to say. So yatha gatir deva manusya ho prathak svayeva dharme na param chupet prathak. So just like the behavior of deva and human beings, gods and human beings, the rules and customs, behaviors, they are different. So a person who is situated in, in his own dharma should not accuse others who are in a different field or living in a different consciousness, so to speak. So devas can do certain things which are not applicable for human beings. <coughs> and the 
and if we say well why are they doing like this so because they are devas and for them it is not a defect to behave in a particular manner Like they have absaras, okay. So they can associate with them. It is not a defect for them, but if human beings associate with another woman, another wife, then it is not considered as religious. It is considered as something. So there may be different rules for them, because. They live in a different society. They are not human beings. So therefore, it says, "Gatil deva manusya ho prithak." That it is their gati, their movements, their principles are different. And knowing this, you should not blame them or find fault in them. So we have to actually consider ourselves. what is my path and then we have to also know others and it does not mean that everybody has to follow the same rules as i have to follow sanyasis have different rules householders have different rules householders associate with women sanyasis do not associate brahmacharis do not associate so now sanyasi criticizes a householder hey, what are you doing you are with women oh, because he is a householder yeah principle is different his principle is different so krishna therefore says sve sve adhikare yanishta sa guna parikhyate that to be situated in your own adhikar to have nishta according to your own status in the society that is called a good quality Not that you have to follow somebody else. So vipariyas to dosha shya, but to behave differently, that is according to others' custom, that is wrong. So therefore, there are different principles described in shastra: the duties of women, duties of men, duties of a student, duties of a renounced person, duties of a married man. duties of teachers so there are different duties so everybody has to follow their own duty that is good and while following one's own duty there is no need to criticize somebody who is in a different status of life and not following it that. that's that's what she is saying so what she is saying is that you are daksha you are married person you are prajapati and shiva he is an atma ram so what he is doing he knows he doesn't have to live by your principles but you are throwing mud at him unnecessarily deham tajami eva says i will definitely give up my body kintu tvaya shastrartham अविदुषा भगवती श्री रुद्रे निर्दोषे अभी आरोपित लुप्त क्रियाया शुचय इत्यादि दोष कंटक उद्धृत बट यू हू डू नॉट नो द मीनिंग ऑफ शास्त्र एंड देर फॉर विदाउट नोइंग द मीनिंग ऑफ शास्त्र यू हैव ब्लेम्ड इनोसेंट लॉर्ड शिव द सुप्रीम पर्सन by making that statement that he has no pure habits lives in the cremation ground etc so he says before that i am going to clear your doubt dosh kantakam udhrite i will remove the thorn of these faults which you have put in before i kill myself so that's why she is speaking this स्वयलोके स्वात्मन रमणस्य महामुनेतिर्वेदवादा विधि निषेधरूपाक्षीकृत न वर्तते सो इट्स दैट ए ग्रेट पर्सन हू इज 
enjoying in his own self, then his intelligence does not follow the injunctions or prohibitions described in the Vedas because he is beyond that. So he said, there is no need for him to follow. If he follows, okay, good, but there is no need. Even Krishna says, Tavat karmani kurvite na nirvidyate yavna mat kartha sarmadava sarta yavna jayate That one should follow the prescribed duties of the Vedas as long as one has not become renounced or one has not developed faith in hearing my stories. Which means as soon as one becomes qualified by for the path of jnana or bhakti, then one should give up karma. So if he is a Mahamuni, then he, he is already beyond the path of karma. And it is only in the path of karma that all these Vedic injunctions and prohibitions are applicable. So Shiva is beyond that, so why do you expect him that he has to now stand up for you and sit down when you sit down? He is beyond all this. Or he is wearing these bones or sitting here. It makes no difference to him. He doesn't have to perform a sacrifice when you need all these cleanliness principles. Now he is going somewhere in the temple to do the puja. He is absorbed in his own meditation. He is an atmara. Yaduktam kusala charite in a sham he a chartho ne vidyate vipariyena chanartha iti swaram charanti muniopin ne he mana iti. So he is uh, referring to two verses from 10th canto, 33rd chapter. And that's uh, when Parikshit Maharaj, he has heard Krishna's activity with the gopis. So he has asked this question to Sukhdev that this is very amazing that Krishna is behaving like this after hearing all his pastime. So he asked this question that Sansthapana Dharmasya Prasma Itrasya Cha Avitirno Hi Bhagavan Anshayana Jagdeshwara that Lord Krishna has appeared to establish Dharma. He himself says in Bhagavad Gita Dharma Sansthapana Artha Sambhavami I come to establish Dharma and to uproot the opposite of Dharma. So he says, this is my understanding. So how yet sakatham dharma setu nam vakta karta dhirakshita pratipa macharat dhirma par dara manasana. And how is that this person who is the protector of dharma, who is the teacher of dharma, who is the follower of dharma, he has behaved in this adharmic manner, improper manner by relating, dancing, joking with the wives of other people. Because he is a householder, he has his own wives. So why did he behave in this manner? Apta kamo yadupati kritamanan ve jagupsitam kima bhikraya etam ne sancha chinde sumate. He says that Lord Krishna is apta kamo, he is fully satisfied in himself. So why he has behaved in this abominable manner? using the word abominable, jagupsita. Something like if you hear, your heart shrinks, contracts. You can't even hear that he is doing such a thing. So he says, what is his purpose? This is my great doubt. Please remove this. So Sukhdeva Goswami then spoke 11 verses, which are very interesting. So he says, Dharma Gati Karo Drishta Ishwaranam Cha Sahasam Tejiya Samna Dosha Vannai Sarupadayatha. First he says that this discrepancy about Dharma or action, this is seen in great personalities. Because they are powerful and it has no influence on them. Just as fire can consume anything, even if you put some rotten thing inside the fire, it does not pollute the fire. 
So in the same way, this behavior has no influence on him. Naitat samachare jatu manasapi hi nishwara vinashyat tacharan modhyat yatharudra of the generation. But a common person should not follow their example even by the mind. If one does that, surely one will be destroyed. It's like Lord Shiva drank this poison. If one tries to drink the poison, <coughs> then one will not become Siti Kantha. One will become Siti Deha. The whole body will turn blue. <laughs> Iswaranam vacha satyam tathai vacharitam kuchitte samyat savacho yuktam buddhi maatpat samacharit. He says that the, what you have to take is the word of some of these people, what they say. That is truth. And sometimes also the way they behave, but not always. So te samyat vacho yuktam buddhi maatpat samacharit. What they have spoken, that intelligent person should follow. Kushala achirita ne sham hiya swartho ne vidyate vipariyena vanartho ne rahankara naam prabha. He says these people have nothing to achieve by following properly or by doing a prohibited, prohibited act. Kushala achirita ne sham hiya swartho ne vidyate. They have nothing to achieve by following an injunction or by flouting. Vipariyena vanartho, nor they get any sin. Because why? They are nirahankari. They are not working on the platform of ego. Mm -hmm. So, Swaram charanti munyopina nahiyamana stea chya tat purusha kuteva manga. So, in fact, that even the sages, they behave swaram according to their mind. What to speak of? Personality like Krishna. And then we'll go in the next one. So this point is that they are beyond rules and regulations. They are not we have to follow rules and regulations because we want to get rid of our bondage free from ignorance. But they don't have to do that. They are already Aptarama, Aptakam. So if they are performing some activity like this, then they have a different purpose. And that you should understand and you must criticize. This is what she is saying. Ato mukta nam badha nam cha mitha pradha geva gati viti atra So I said, therefore, the behavior of those who are liberated and behavior of those who are in bondage is different. And this we should understand. We should not think that those who are liberated should also behave like those who are in bondage. Ateva sviya dharma sthitaha param nakshikait. So he says, therefore, one should not accuse those who are in liberated platform, but should remain situated in one's own dharma. Karma pravrittam cha nivrittam api ritam vede vivicho bhalinga mashritam virodhi tadya upadaika kartri dvayam tatha brahmani karma narchati. So she says that there are two types of karma, pravritti and nivritti, which are described in the Veda. And so one has to understand this separately. So pravritti karma is performing sacrifices mainly in one ashram system and whatever chanting, Gayatri mantra, charities, all these five types, shraddha, etc. And nivritti is controlling mind, controlling senses means following the path of Jnana and renouncing all these activities. 
So he says that both are right. That both are for different types of people. So one of the very important thing in Vedic culture is this adhikar. This is what people at present do not understand. Although adhikar is also applicable now, adhikar means eligibility or competency. Everybody is not competent to perform everything. There is no human being who is eligible or competent for everything. So in the same way Vedic scriptures they prescribe this that you work according to your eligibility and don't try to act according to others eligibility. Swadharma nidhanam sveya pardharma bhayava Krishna says that you perform your own duty according to your own eligibility, your own adhikar. Don't perform others activities that is dangerous. If you do that, then it is cause of fear for you. In this famous story in Panchatantra, there was one washerman. So washerman in India, they take cloth on a donkey and take to the river in the olden days and wash on the river. Then they bring the cloth back to home. They put on the donkey, we have one washerman here on the back side. He also has, sometimes you hear them brain time to time. So he he had a donkey and he had a dog. So dog was not useful for him. So he did not care for the dog. But donkey he was caring because it's useful. So this dog was very unhappy. But he's hardly giving him food, although he's taking care of him. So one night a thief came. And the washerman was sleeping on his cot in the style outside for summer time. So the donkey is tied to a peg and the dog is also sitting there. Both are awake, the master is sleeping. So thief enters. Now it is the duty of the dog to bark. But dog does not bark. He does not even, as they say, bat his eyelids. He's just looking like a cool cucumber. <laughs> Maybe even feeling happy that now I will teach this guy a lesson. Mm -hmm. He never takes care of me. So he did not bark. The thief is going inside making noise. Then this donkey told the dog, why don't you bark? So he says, why shall I bark? He says, because there is a thief inside. And our master is going to lose his possessions. So he says, but he doesn't give me any food, so I'm not going to bark. So he says, you are a rascal. You are not taking care of the master. So he says, if you are so devoted to your master, you do something. So then the donkey, he started his song. Dincho, <laughs> dincho. And he didn't stop. Usually they do it. For one minute or fixed period they have and then they stop. But he did not stop. So this disturbed the sleep of the washerman. He woke up and this guy is going on. So he thought like this. He thought that I am giving him too much food. He's getting so much energy and he's disturbing my sleep. So he says, I'm going to teach a lesson. So in India the washerman they use one stick. You know, a stick for he took washing the clothes. With cloth for washing. So he took that and gave four or five to this donkey. He said, you rascal. <laughs> you got too much food from me. Now you get so much energy that you don't even let me sleep. And after hitting him four or five times, he went back to his bed. So when he went back to his bed, then dog was asking, so now, how do you feel? <laughs> So you want to do my duty? Just see, this is what you can do. <laughs> so you do your duty, I do my duty. 
So if you do someone else's job, then this is what happens. So everybody has their own adhikar. And now people say we are all equal. And everybody is qualified for everything. Women are equal to men. So they should also go to the military and fight. So they are doing it now. But actually it's not their job. It seems they want to be like men, they want to imitate. But by imitation you don't become equal. So what they are doing, they are suffering. Like this donkey. So actually they suffer, but out of ego they don't want to say it. They think among their own community they feel superior that I can do it. But they actually have a lot of trouble with this type of job. So one should work according to one's adhikar. So Shiva's adhikar is different, Daksha's adhikar is different. And Shiva is not saying Daksha to Daksha, why are you doing this? And you should also come and live with me on the cremation ground. Why do you go through all this hassle of doing sacrifice? You can just come here, chant Maha Mantra with me. You will get more benefit than what you get by doing this sacrifice for all these hours. Spoiling your eyes in the smoke. Right? You remember the smoke? <laughs> so he's saying, why do you want to destroy your eyes in the smoke? Come get fresh air and no worries. So he he's not saying this because he knows that his path is different, my path is different. So that's what he says, that Swadhikare Dharma prap Swadhikar prapte dharma yavasthidha Tadachara neva param bhinnadikar praptam dharma So, Sadaachara neva param bhinnadikar praptam dharma tadanushthataram vanakshipet namunde. This is some other commentary. Hmm? I went to another commentary and I am wondering what it is. So, nanu pravittam karma sivo ma karotu nivrittam katham na karoti. So now he is asking Daksha that if he is not doing pravitta karma, means this sacrifice etc., then at least he should do nivritta. So he says that both cannot be performed by one person. Vivichyamano bha linga mashritam virodhi tad yoga padaika kartari. Because a person, prosper things which are contradictory to them, they cannot be performed by one person. And Shankar, he is Parabrahma, so he has no need to perform any one of them. Tatha Brahmani Karma Narachati. He is free from that. So if he says that why he is not doing Nivritta Karma, Sramdham, etc. So then he says, then she is saying, Karma Pravittam Agni Otradi, Nivrittam Sramdham Adi, Ritam Satyam Yoga. He says that both are right, but for two different people. All this sacrifice, etc., they are good for Daksha, and controlling mind, senses, etc., they are good for Shiva. Yata Vede Ashritam Vihitam. Why? Because both are prescribed in the Vedas. So just as if you read Ayurveda, then there are different medicines for different type of disease. Now everything is not for everybody. You have to see what is the disease and then give the medicine accordingly. So these paths are also like medicines. So for one person this is suitable, one is competent to follow this, another competent to follow another one. 
But current situation is individual themselves don't know what are their adhikaris. That's what is their to, eligibility? This is the main confusion. So you have to go to a teacher to find that. And where are those teachers who can really guide the society? Oh, you come to Vrindavan. <laughs> 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 no, I'm talking about in general. In, in this general people problem. don't need to know this. At least, no, they need to know their adhikar, what they are eligible they are, to function it. They need to know, but they are not interested in knowing. If they are interested in knowing, they will find a person who will tell. But why they don't, don't know? Because they are not interested. They are against it. If you even tell like this, they get <coughs> angry. Why are you saying we are all equal? <laughs> I had a big debate last time in one of my class, one student, when I was in my very first lecture, I was, I was just giving an overview. I said, before I start, I give an overview of Vedic culture. So I started speaking on the scriptures and the Vanashram and this. And this girl was, she completely freaked out. So why are you saying and this is just suppressing people and controlling them and discriminating? This is in your Hinduism class in Rutgers? Yeah. Oh, that lady. <laughs> so they don't want to hear this. So because people don't want it, then what is the value of anybody telling? Doctors are available if people have sickness and they want to get cured. But suppose people have disease and they don't want to get cured, what the doctor will do? And doctors will disappear. So nobody will take to the profession of becoming a doctor because you know that no patient come to me. So if, why such people don't exist now who can tell what is your adhikar? Because nobody wants that. There is no demand. It's a demand and supply formula. So, even in India, people don't like to hear this anymore. They, they want everything the same. So, this being equal is the fashion now, so the trend. Not only just male or female, but everybody is equal now. Everybody dresses the same thing, everybody does the same thing, everybody eats the same thing eat together, eat from the same place, no discrimination, which is called progress. So here discrimination is considered as the sign of intelligence, discrimination is considered as the function of buddhi, and now in modern times they say that no discrimination, then you are superior. So this is common understanding of people that don't discriminate, don't make judgments. So throw away your buddhi into the garbage bin. It's not needed. And one other question for the first verse 18 we did it today. Mm. There's somebody is somebody like Sati who doesn't even decide you know which way she's going to take birth or anything. It's out of her control and she takes birth through the daksha. Yes. It's, I mean, ordinary people you understand, but somebody like that, is it, what's the reason behind that? Reason behind what? What's the reason behind for some person incapable like that has to take birth, which is beyond their control, through the daksha? What's you it? mean sati, why she is like that? Yeah. Because it doesn't matter to us makes no difference. She is, no matter where she is born, she is going to get married to Shiva and be with him. Yeah, but here she takes birth through the... Because just like we say, Krishna decides who will be his parents, right, basically, and he decides through that. Because at that time, Daksha but... was the only one. <laughs> 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 and this is right in the very beginning, and we are at the story. I thought there are more Prajapatis then, because Kashyapa were also there. Kashyapa is the grandson, yeah. he comes later. So, who was there at that time? Yeah. Only Kardama had nine daughters. Yeah. And these nine daughters were married to the nine sons of Brahma. Yeah. And Daksha was one of them. So they were just marrying into nine, there was nobody else. Those were the first nine girls born. Yeah. 
and out of that Daksha got this Akuti and had 13 daughters. So they were always married to Shiva. The only other choice was that she could have been born to Karma. Hmm. It's not a choice. Um, I would like to go back to the point you were just making about how today people are not qualified. They're not making discrimination and actually they don't want to know. Um, I can't help thinking that a system works for a certain period and then when it doesn't work it changes and the main reason it changes is because it's not being applied properly and people are being hurt under it. Yes. So I, I'm also seeing it in this situation that people are thinking oh, we're all equal because people have been so hurt under the um, system of discrimination being improperly okay. applied. Yes. So the solution is not to apply improperly, but apply properly. Mm. And the solution is not, not to apply. So this is called that medicine is worse than disease. disease yes. <laughs> so something is not working properly does not mean that now you throw it away. It is not a solution. If it is not working properly, find out why it is not working properly. Because it is not being applied properly. When you apply it properly, the solution is not to throw it away. If you have a bulb in your room and it is not functioning properly, maybe the switch is not working, it is loose, when you try to touch it, it gives a shock. And the solution is not that you take out the bulb and smash in the ground. It's not going to solve the problem. Then you say, well, now I don't have to touch it. The solution is to fix the problem. So every system, every good system is based on education and knowledge. Mm -hmm. And when that knowledge deteriorates, then the corruption comes in the system. And when the corruption comes, you have to remove the cause of that corruption. Not that you throw away the system. That is throwing away the baby in the bathwater. So that's what has been done in India. That instead of trying to find out that what is wrong with it, they are throwing it out. And now actually what is happening is that they are not throwing it out also. They are keeping the worst part of it. Because the politicians have to go get votes. And the votes come from on the basis of caste. So caste will never be driven out of India. It's impossible because every politician wants it. Because every politician, whether it is Mayavati or anybody, you know, I am saying here in UP, they all get votes because I belong to this particular caste and all people of this caste will support me. So they never want that it is destroyed. But they all talk against it and yet they all maintain it. <laughs> So now there are more groups related, Jats, they want their reservation, the other ones, they want their reservation, Brahmanas, they also want their reservation, Dalits want their So where, where is it going? They are making it more fortified. Mm -hmm. like yeah. All the unions in India are on the basis of caste. Mm -hmm. There is Brahman Mahasabha, Agrawal Mahasabha, mm -hmm. Khandelwal Mahasabha, Kshatriya Mahasabha. Vashya Mahasabha, Mahasabha means union and others are all names of the caste. Agrawal, Ghandelwal is around caste and some castes. So mm -hmm. when you go to America, there also they have Tamil Union, Telugu Union, Gujarati Union, and in Gujarati they may have what is the name of their place? No, the place from you come. Uh, no, no, here in Gujarat. In Gujarat, in Amdavad. Oh, your village area. Huh? Your, your village your, your area. Panchmal, Dohad. Yeah, so now they will have a Dohad community. Yeah. Among the Gujarati also, all the people from Dohad will meet together. Yeah. Or there is a Navsari. Mm -hmm. and all the Navsari people will meet together. So they all get together on the basis of this. 
patels will be one side, this I one side. So this is this will continue. Right? But that proper education is not there. So therefore she says that Lord Shiva he is beyond both Pravritta and Nivritta. So basically in the Vedas there are two types of path which are described. Pravritti mark and Nivritti mark. Path of Pravritti means action. Nivritti means inaction or renunciation. So there is path of action that you you have a family, you are married, property, possessions, you earn wealth and you do good deeds, charity, sacrifices, help others, social welfare, this is one path and the other is the path of renouncing everything, taking sannyas and no family life, no relations, no anybody, this is Yan mark, these are the two prominent. Then there is a third one which is the path of Bhagavata, that is path of Bhakti which is beyond both, it is neither pravritti nor nivritti or it is having both in it. So it is beyond both and has both. It synthesizes both of them into it. So Lord Shiva is beyond those two. Otherwise one person can neither cannot be pravritti and nivritti simultaneously. But because one who is in nivritti cannot do pravritti, one who is in pravritti cannot do nivritti because the rules are different. So both are prescribed in the Vedas. So the first says Nanu Pravrittam Karma Siva Makarotu Nivrittam Katham Nakaroti Tiha Karma. Why is he not doing Nivritta? Karma means Pravrittam Agnihotra Adi, doing this sacrifice called Agnihotra. Nivritta means following the path of renunciation, both are true, yata vede ashritam vihitam, because both are prescribed in the Vedas, tatcha vivichya adhikar vivastha eva, but one has to know who is competent for which path, that is the most important thing, very important, so this actually this type of discrimination exists in society now, so when it comes to making money, then there is you want to get education, everybody cannot get admission in an engineering college or management or in medical science. They discriminate. They see your competency, whether you are competent or not. Then you cannot say we are all equal, why you cannot take admission in this university. But through this reservation, they lower the standards for those things. That's yeah. the problem. That is in India. Yeah. It's nowhere else. And yet, at the same time, they want to remove caste system. How it will, how they will remove? Because they're reserving seats on the basis of caste. So who wants to give it up? I'm getting an advantage now. If I'm lower caste, then I can get admission in a medical college or I can get a job, which otherwise I'm not qualified. Because so many seats are reserved now 40% of the seats are reserved for these people. So even if you are not qualified, then they have to have 40% people in the class belonging to these people or in a job, 40% people must belong to this community. So then unqualified people are getting admission, and getting jobs. So now this unqualified person becomes a medical doctor, then what will he do? So this, this is what breeds corruption here. Because of not following this Adhikar theory. So is, this is called Adhikar Vyavastha. Tatcha Vivichya Adhikar Vyavastha even to Avisheshane. It should not be indiscriminate. Avisheshane means indiscriminate. Vyavasthita Mityartha. Because it is organized like that. And it is scientific. Obeyam rago vairagyam cha chinnam yatra tatra rage sati agni hotra di vairagya sati samdhamani. So he said there are symptoms of both. There are symptoms for what is attachment and what is renunciation. 
So if there is attachment, then get to Agnihotras, etc. This path. If there is detachment, then follow the path of renunciation. Vivichya adhikari dvaya vivasthitam. This is the vivastha, this is the arrangement. Tatkaram dvayam yogpadena yogpatena ekismin kartri virodhi. These two activities cannot exist in one person. Means one person cannot do both. Ragavati nivrittam virodhi. If someone has attachment, then renunciation is against that. And if he takes, how can he perform renunciation? He has attachments. And Varagya Vitti Vati Pravrittam Virodhi. If someone is renounced, then the path of attachment is not favorable to him. So therefore, this is not prescribed for both of them. This the path of nivritti is not prescribed for a person who has attachments to sense pleasures. And path of pravritti is not prescribed for a person who is detached. Tathaiva brahmani tadvayam pravittam nivrittam chaiti uvhim api naruchite inarakmati. But in Brahman, both are not applicable. यथा प्रवृत्ति निवृत्तियों परस्पर धर्म अकर्णे न प्रत्यवाय तथा ईश्वरस्य तदुभय कर्म करने की तिथा। So one who has become Brahman realized, for him there is no defect or sin in the world if one does not follow anything प्रवृत्ति और निवृत्ति। So in the same way Lord Shiva, who is also called Ishwar, is free from is both. And that she is basically saying that Shiva is not not only that he is above Pravritti Marg, path of attachment is Daksha is following, he is even beyond Nivritti Marg. Mm -hmm. And that's why Daksha is unable to understand it. It's beyond his head. That's why his head has to be removed. <coughs> and is that the path? Is similar to the Bhakti path then you can say? Yes. So she will speak few more verses <coughs> on the same theme and then she will give up a word. So any more question? So uh, Bhakti has both Pravriti and Nivriti and is also beyond them? Yes, because it has Pravriti for sake of Krishna. So it refers to the Anukul yes. principle. Right. You accept what is favorable and you reject what is. So there is so, also Nivritti in the sense that we, a Bhakta is not interested in sense enjoyment. In that sense it is Nivritti or mm. renunciation. But a Bhakta has to perform service for God for his pleasure. It may be puja, it may be sacrifice, it may be anything. So in that sense it is Pravritti. It is not Nivritti in the sense that I give up everything, I sit on the corner, not in that sense. It is also not Pravritti in the sense that you are doing all these sacrifices to please some other deities. So in that sense it is neither Pravritti nor Nivritti but has both in it for the pleasure of Krishna. So then if Bhakti is performed with yeah not pure, mixed. No, it is not pure. Uh, yeah, not mixed? No, no, if it is uh, done with material desires, hmm. yes. sakam bhakti, right. then it is not beyond pravritti and nivritti or how no, do you then you are using pravritti, you are using bhakti for pravritti. Mm -hmm. so then it is not really beyond. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah, then it will be one of the three types of bhakti. Just Defined by Kapila. And it's not Uttama Bhakti. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now you're using Bhakti for getting something material. Mm -hmm. So Bhakti becomes gone. Second. And this will never lead to Uttama Bhakti or it is also having, the, let's say, the purifying right. dynamics yeah. and brings him to Uttama Bhakti? can also bring him to Uttama Bhakti by good association. Mm -hmm. 
I just uh, wonder about this mechanism in the mind then that uh, committing suicide to teach a lesson to another person I mean, to punish the other person you yourself you are destroying it. yes uh, your body basically you give up even your life so think that and also another thing that how you let the, the mind is, goes always for the thing which is prohibited That is, ego, ego is like that. It likes challenge. Mm -hmm. So when something is said, don't do it, then ego says, okay, I will do it. Yeah. Because actually, maybe she has right to say that it uh, was an offense, and this and that, and there are two different things, and he, he's not qualified to understand him because he's too much beyond. And it. It's fine. But then there's something more that. Yes, she could have also walked away from there and gone back. But as she will speak later on, there are many things involved in this. It's a very interesting story to study the human psychology. Mm -hmm. Because she will also say later on that if I go back, and Lord Shiva will call me Dakshayani. <laughs> means daughter of Daksha. Mm -hmm. So this will be very painful to me. Mm -hmm. So this will hurt my ego, so she is already worried about that. So this is one consideration. Okay. And as I have said that there are other considerations, that story I told, that part is there. You can also consider that this is the only way she knows that this Daksha will be rectified. If she goes back, then Daksha will remain Daksha and they are in their own home. Now when she does it, then Daksha's head will be chopped off. Right? Then Daksha will come to his senses because then all the gods will go and please Shiva and then Shiva will come and he will be revived back and all this. So this way he will also get the mercy. Mm -hmm. So that is another consideration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in the long run he will get the mercy and everything? Yes. One thing I would like to ask about is that sati is committing sati as an atonement. Because only sati can commit sati. <laughs> yes. um, as an atonement from hearing Daksha's words against Shivaji, right? So my first thought was, well, in this way, she's showing Daksha that he is killing her by his words. Yes. Right? And in a, but in another sense, um, she is also responsible because she chose to expose herself to this situation. Yes. That was the mistake she made. Mm -hmm. So she also made a mistake, mm -hmm. not listening to Lord Shiva's words. And therefore she is ending up in this situation. See, you have to see her. But so I'm saying you have to study the psychology here. She has problem. She has put put herself in a situation that if she is not very egoistic, then the only thing she can do is. I mean, what can I say? If she because she is very egoistic, mm -hmm. the only thing she can do is give up her life. And as I said, that when there is ego like that, then people do this out of ego. If she goes back, she will be taunted. She is not received, you know, received well here. So what she can do? Yeah. Where can she go? So she has to give up her body. If she has to maintain her ego. So she is, she is giving it up as an act of ego also. Yeah. Because she is not received here and if she goes back, she will not be received there. That's what and of course <coughs> Shiva is going to receive her. But later on, he can joke. Ah, oh, I told you, look, now you have come back. He didn't listen to me. So now because she is very egoistic, she doesn't want to hear this. Better I kill myself. 
so many times people commit suicide out of dejection, depression, they are so frustrated and they also kill because of their own ego. Their ego they want, doesn't let them They want to protect their ego see. up to the extent of giving up their body. Mm. And that's why I told you that story. Mm. And this guy just wanted to show, look, I won. Mm. Because I told you that you will not be able to wear this sari. So I see. Mm. I, I will I will make you do I will make you realize what I said. I'm so great. So to maintain his ego, he's committing suicide. He'll remember the rest of her life. Wearing white. Wearing white. Every time she wears white, remember that. So for the rest of her life, she's going to remember this statement of the husband and feel guilty. Torture this. This is, her, this is his ego. Hmm? That I will, I will torture you now because I am superior. That's what ego does. So she is also going to do that. That I am going to torture you by killing myself. To the production. She is not even thinking that by killing myself I am going to cause pain to Shiva who has given his half body to me. She is not thinking about it. See how ego works? She is so much worried about her own ego and she doesn't have consideration. Okay, if she really loves Shiva and if you even see jokes and comments, you just tolerate it. So now the poor guy will be left in separation from her. So what is he going to feel? So now you understand the situation of love here and then situation what you will see in 10th canto. Mm. That when Nanda Maharaj came back from Mathura after Krishna did not come back and he said that he had not come back, then Mother Yasoda asked that, how is that you have come back alive? Mm -hmm. You did not bring my son. How, how is it that you have this heart of being alive here without Krishna? Dasrath, he died when Lord Ramachandra went to forest. Mm -hmm. So what did he say? He says that, yes, you are right, but I am alive because I know that Krishna has promised that one day he will come back and if he comes back here and he does not find me, pain. then how much he will feel pain. I don't want him to be suffering like that. Therefore, I will tolerate my own suffering and keep my body alive. This is love. So much consideration. Similarly, all the bodies they yes. kept their body and everything. Yes. Um, I would also like to go back to the point 